Welcome to Word for Word broadcast, coming to you seven times a week, once a day, every evening. Hope everyone had a good day. I've just been doing nothing, resting today. And so we had a good day of that, getting ready to go to the prayer meeting. Thank you for watching live. Thank you for watching later. Thank you for sharing the broadcast. Thank you for praying for the broadcast and supporting us. And also, uh, Make sure you go to YouTube later on tonight. You can watch this video again or tell folks I'm on YouTube. At Clay Cordell, subscribe, hit the bell, all that, like, comment. Appreciate it. Father, bless, move, have your way. In Jesus' name, save the sinner nearest to hell, Jesus. As we lift you up, Jesus Christ, the only Savior of the world, in Jesus' name we pray. Bless your people wherever they are in the world. Amen, Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, so we continue to preach a series of sermons. Uh, that Pastor David Carter, our pastor of Rock Church, graciously gave to our broadcast. And I don't know how many he's giving me, but thank God he's being gracious and he's helping us and um, to deliver the, these messages that he preached over the years, over 48 years of preaching all over the place for God. And now you're able to hear it every night right here. So I hope that you see the importance and how... how uh, this is a privilege for me to preach it and teach it to myself and for you to hear it preached and teached in your life. So don't take it for granted. Uh, don't worry and be happy is what I'm preaching tonight. <laughs> and so Philippians 4. Let's look at it. Got to move quickly. Uh, got to get ready and go to church. Church is at 7. And uh, all right, let's look at it. Philippians 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. That's in all things. Uh, again, I say rejoice. See, our emotional well-being is definitely tied to us rejoicing in the Lord in all circumstances. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Uh, that, that's talking about the rapture to come or the presence of God in our life. 
be careful for nothing. In other words, don't worry about nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. In other words, the power of believing, expecting prayer. Amen. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding. I like what one preacher said here. The satisfying peace of God, which is beyond the pale of human comprehension. Wow. Uh, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now, let's get right into this message, and then uh, I'll give you uh, a few more announcements, and then off the church I go. <laughs> Don't worry, be happy is the title of this little message tonight. Verse 4, the Word of God says, Rejoice in the Lord. Always again, I say rejoice. So this tells me that God's people ought to be a rejoicing people. Uh, you know, happiness is what happens to us. Joy is, comes from the fruit of the Spirit. And so we should be uh, joyful people, rejoicing people. Uh, Psalms 85, 6, Wilt thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee, in God? Nehemiah 8.10, the joy of the Lord is your strength. John 15.11, these things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Luke 10.20, rejoice because your names are written in heaven. I sure am rejoicing because of that tonight. I'm glad I asked Jesus into my heart, and he saved me and wrote, the, wrote my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Rejoice because your names are written in heaven. So God's people those who are saved by the grace by Jesus Christ from their sins by Jesus should be a rejoicing people. Verse 6, be careful for nothing. The word careful there means to be anxious, anxiety. Uh, the cure for anxiety, doctors, thank God for doctors, but prayer, having a prayer life, a believing, expecting, expected prayer life. We shouldn't be full of anxiety and anxious or worried about anything. The Greek word for nothing is meeting. It means don't worry over one thing. That's what the, the Greek literally says in that verse. Don't worry over one thing. So all through the Bible, the Word of God, the Bible, we are assured that God will take care of us and supply all of our needs. Matthew six twenty five through thirty four. If we put the kingdom of God, put Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Uh, Philippians 4.19, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Psalms 23.1, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Or as a little boy said in Sunday school, when trying to memorize Psalms 23, The Lord is my shepherd, I don't need nobody else. <laughs> Psalms 37.25, I've been young and now am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, God is faithful. He will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but with the temptation also make a way of escape that you might be able to bear it. There is a weight limit. I like what the Pastor Carter was talking about that. There's a weight limit on each one of us, and the Lord will only allow the devil to go so far. And he's got to get a permit to even mess with us if we're saved anyway. Uh, now Romans eight twenty eight, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. So God took nothing and made a world, and there is plenty of nothing. <laughs> God can make something out of nothing. So don't worry. Be joyful, rejoice, be happy. So let's look at some Bible characters in the Word of God who worried for nothing. Number one. David worried that he would lose his life to King Saul, 1 Samuel 27, 1. It is hard to imagine that this is the same David that killed a bear and a lion, bear and, a lion and also Goliath with a stone. But still, fear gripped his heart, and he worried that Saul would kill him. Did Saul ever kill David? No. So he worried for nothing. <laughs> Number two, Elijah, the great, one of the greatest prophets in the Bible. Elijah ran away when Jezebel threatened to kill him in 1 Kings 19, verses 1 through 8. Again, it's hard to imagine that this great man of God, who had prayed down fire from heaven, 
defeated Ahab and all the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel. Now we see Elijah running for his life, sitting down under a juniper tree, and asking God to kill him, desiring to die, and said, It is enough. So, did, Eli did Jezebel ever kill Elijah like she said she would? No. Elijah worried for nothing. Elijah was on only one of only two uh, people that went to heaven without dying. He went up in fiery chariots and fiery horses. And so we see he worried for nothing. How about the people at the Red Sea? They worried that Pharaoh would kill them. God had delivered his people out of Egyptian bondage through the use of plagues and the blood of a lamb. Now they worried and they murmured at the Red Sea and said, I wish we would have stayed in Egypt. Now we're going to die here at the seashore. So, did the people of God perish at the Red Sea? No. Moses said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. God split the Red Sea. God opened it up and they crossed over on dry land. And he drowned their enemies in the same, using the same Red Sea that he had split. So, they worried for nothing. How about King Darius? He worried all night about Daniel and the lion's den in Daniel chapter 6. So did the lions kill Daniel? No. Praise the Lord. The next morning Daniel was okay, for God had sent an angel and clothed, clothed, clothed the jaws of the lions. By the way, the lions didn't want to eat Daniel because he was all backbone and gristle. <laughs> so King Darius, another one, worried for nothing. How about the women at the resurrection of Jesus on resurrection morning? They were worried how they would move the stone away and get to the body of Jesus to prepare it for a burial. But praise the Lord, when they got there, the stone had been rolled away. We know it was rolled away by an angel. The angel said, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. So the women on resurrection morning, you know what they did? They did like we do. We worry for nothing. And then think about Peter in closing. Peter worried that because of he, he had denied the Lord three times, it would never be the same again with him and Jesus. Matthew 26, 69, 75. But praise the Lord, Jesus loves and forgives. He, did, he loved Peter. He forgave Peter. He restored Peter. He re recommissioned Peter. Uh, and he became a great apostle for the Jesus for the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, "Go tell my disciples and Peter too." So Peter worried for nothing. So we just looked at David worried for nothing, Elijah worried for nothing, the people at the Red Sea worried for nothing, King Darius worried for nothing, the women of Resurrection Morning worried for nothing, Peter worried for nothing and guess what I worry for nothing and we need to quit worrying so much that's the message we need to quit worrying we need to be happy or be joyful because that's the fruit of the Holy Spirit let the Holy Spirit cause us to have joy even though the circumstances may not dictate joy because happiness is only what happens to you so we need the joy of the Lord, which you can only keep be produced by the Lord being in your life and through the power and presence and person of God, the Holy Spirit. First Peter 5, 7, God covers all the bases. He's got them all covered. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Well, that's it for tonight. I hope you enjoyed this message. Brother Mark, I know you're on the way home from work, so I'll uh, give you the scriptures for tomorrow night's message. I hope that you enjoy these broadcasts every day, and I hope this broadcast was a blessing to you. And if it was, share it for others. They may get a blessing out of it, too. So God bless you. God bless America. God bless the Jewish people and the nation of Israel. Now, tonight, we got prayer meeting at 7. That's why I'm on early. Uh, we are having, we started back up our Monday night, late night prayer. There's only three of us that do it, Brother Richard Calvert, Pastor David Carter, our pastor, and myself. The Psalms 134 prayer meeting is what we call it. If you have a special prayer request, you can private message me. You can put it in the comment section of this video or on my Facebook page. Uh, but make sure you get your prayer request in tonight if you want it prayed over at the church. We'll be meeting 
after prayer meeting, we usually meet from like 9.30 to almost midnight. So it might be 11 o'clock tonight. Make sure you get your request in. So until tomorrow, we wish God's best for all of you. And if you get a chance, check out the video I shared on my Facebook page about the floating Bible. It'll be a blessing to you. See you tomorrow.